going live. Man, your camera's way up close. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody. Just so everybody knows, we are on dual computers with Wes here from Transcend Existence. Yep. And for those that don't know me on Wes channels, I, hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> this is Chris. <laughs> so if you have any questions for Wes and I, let us know. Let us know if the audio sounds good as well. Uh, but we are here in Kansas <clears throat> at the moment, and you might hear some background wind because it's pretty windy here today in Kansas. It's very windy today. All night long, actually. The whole buses are rocking pretty good. Audio is good. <laughs> Your camera is a lot more clear than mine. Yeah, you, you. Let me let me close this window behind us. Oh, it's fine. I'm, I'm sure it's fine. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, if anybody has any questions about what we're doing here in Kansas, all that's been happening. That's a little better. Both updates with uh, Wes and I. I think uh, more people are going to have questions for Wes because when's the last time you posted a video? Uh, actually, the last time I posted the video was when I had purchased that building. So it's been about, man, a month and two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So I did an update on that building scenario at that point. Um, I'll go ahead on, on my channel here. I'll let you guys know <clears throat> there's been some changes on that building. Um, I've decided to put it up for sale. I had a few issues with the city down there. Um, not, not necessarily with the building of the building or anything and upgrading and, re, you know, the rejuvenation of it or anything, but more with some parking issues. Um, got to fly, catch it, Chris. <laughs> I've been catching flies. <laughs> yeah. I hate flies. I got pretty good at catching them. Yep. Um, so anyway, uh, there were some issues with, uh, allowing people to park and live in their vehicle, um, basically next to the building. And there was a little bit more work than I anticipated when I bought the place. Um, I honestly kind of, you know, I screwed up basically is where, where it lies. I should have done a little more research before jumping in. Um, but honestly, I may end up keeping it. I've got it up for sale, but I may end up keeping it and, uh, you know, go ahead and going through and fixing it up. It might just be a cool little clubhouse type scenario down the road. Um, but we'll just see what happens. I'm figuring probably um, February or so. If I still have it, maybe going down and starting some projects on it and get it up and running and just see how it goes. Um, nothing is solidified. Um, it's just kind of going to do whatever the universe says I need to do at the moment. You know, basically, I'm just kind of kind of going with flow with it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the update on that. I'm not actually working in it and I'm not working on it at, at the moment. So um, I'm here near Wichita, Kansas. Chris came up to hang out and we're going to do some work on his bus finish it yeah we're gonna do do a lot of work on his bus actually so getting the ceiling put in getting the uh under storage done and gonna paint that bad boy so so on mine gail asks is Wes single <laughs> um yes i am gail <laughs> you have to send her your uh your email you, you send me a send me a <laughs> send me a message <laughs> and don trump uh Adding ceiling and other stuff to the school. Yeah, so with mine, adding the ceiling, painting the exterior, and under base storage. So I have been uh, sanding the last three or four days nonstop on the bus. Got about, I think I'm at about a little over half. So maybe about 60% sanded. Well, probably about 50 because I need to go back yeah. and touch up a bunch of small stuff around rivets and everything. But getting the... Uh, Getting the bus all finished up, at least uh, to the point to where it just looks like a normal rig going down the road. So that is uh, that's what's been happening here in Kansas. Yep. And a lot of a lot of uh, suggestions on how to kill flies. Seventy percent alcohol with peppermint oil kills them. And Ashley got. Have you ever seen the fly guns, the little shotguns you put salt in? Yeah. Just I should probably get one of those. Yeah. You have salt everywhere, but it'll be fun. <laughs> so let's see if I've got any questions over here. Um, yeah. So I got, yeah. Hey Gina. And Gina yeah. I was on a tiny home tours video before. Oh, was she? she was commenting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm not going to do the shop right now, Gina. Um, basically she asked us, uh, so you're not going to have a shop. Or just a different shop and you know for right now i'm just kind of winging it um i'm just working on some stuff for chris and maybe get a, a roof raise in here at my buddy's place where we're staying 
um, just to make up some money and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, we'll just see what happens with the shop. Um, still looking maybe for some land, possible, you know, put up a building or something like that. You know, maybe do some stuff with Chris. He's got a lot of work to, to get done and some cool ideas ahead of, ahead of him. So see, see how all that goes. Um, yeah. Got some capital coming in from the online incomes, just reinvesting it. So either building more skin or uh, <clears throat> mini schoolies for videographers or possibly renting out. Cause I'm looking at land around the Nashville area to invest in right now, maybe a tiny home village, maybe nightly rentals with rigs, basically just getting my income all off this online stuff. Cause you never know how that's going to go. And if somebody presses a button, then you're basically screwed, you know, like they, they can just take that away. So trying to diversify essentially and just reinvesting that money into something new and with Wes, be able to work on projects together, obviously finish my bus. That's more of a personal project. I just want to get done, but yeah. Um, so here, uh, um, thank you, Faithful Tribe. I appreciate that. Uh, said thanks for the work you guys do. Love your artistry, Wes. So yeah, thank you so much. I enjoy doing art, and I'd love to really get pretty in depth into that here before too long. But just kind of in limbo now, just trying to get things going for myself. Um, I know Chris isn't sure about Schooly Palooza until after November. Will you be there or the same boat? Yeah, I'm not sure about Schooly Palooza either. I've, I've got a lot of a lot of stuff going on as well. Um, I'm honestly hoping to uh, make my way down to Phoenix to do some uh, bus work on my bus. Um, go to Tony down there at AAA Bus and get some stuff done to my bus around the January time period. And then I'm going to be a grandfather uh, in February, so I want to make sure I'm back here for uh, February uh, for the birth of my grandson. So... I'll be back here uh, for that. And then I'm really not sure where things are heading after that. Actually, speaking of Arizona, Bricks of Happiness, they just said, hey, friends. Uh, so I believe they said that they're, they're they're in Arizona now. So hey guys. a lot of people, like we know Jim and Debbie's going to Arizona from Life is a Joy Bus, but a lot of people that we talked to are actually not going to Arizona this year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with everything going on, lots up in the air for a lot of people. Like, I know a lot of people that actually, they're no longer on the road. They, you know, just parked. They're living in a house now, waiting for things <clears throat> to calm down. Some people are just going as normal. Some people are trying out new destinations. So, like, people actually living on the road, we know people that are doing just tons of random different stuff now. Like, there's no real set plans for a lot of people. Yeah. So. This, this whole year is still in a loop for a lot of people just trying to re restructure whatever it it was that they had planned for, you know, mm -hmm. so it's a little, little tough. Yeah. If you have any questions for us, yeah. Put it in the comments, post, man. We're going to get this fly. Post up the by questions. By the time this live video, on, don't, don't move. Okay. Just don't slap me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> if he lands, he's a goner. <laughs> he's all over. I got a fly swatter, but I know you have fun just snagging him out of the air. Mm -hmm. Mr. Miyagi taught you that. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, Zen that I learned living in a school bus out in the middle of the desert, the bunch of flies. That's right. Uh, Bricks of Happiness. Yeah, it's a bit nuts now up in the air 2021. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Lots of people commenting from all over, so thanks for uh, joining everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super excited to be a, a grandfather. Uh it's going to be a, a good time. It's going to be a grandson, too. So hopefully I can uh, teach him some cool things. <laughs> Next generation of uh, bus builders. Uh, Ashley asked, any advice for those of us still building out buses in these uncertain times? Uh, say that again. I was reading one as you were reading. Uh, any advice for those of us still <laughs> building out buses in these uncertain times? Mm. Hurry up because they're going to get more <laughs> uncertain. <laughs> I'd say finish quick. Yeah. Get get your uh, living systems in there. Way to cook food, your solar, and a way to store food. Yeah. Priority. Get, yeah. But, get that done. I mean, honestly, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just so uncertain nowadays. Uh, no real, no real good advice except yeah, hurry up. <laughs> um hey shane nice to see you on there hadn't heard, heard from you in a long time man it's an old high school buddy of mine actually oh, really back in uh when i was a sophomore in high school or no no junior in high school he was picking me up in the morning because my car was broke <laughs> down so <laughs> how you doing shane there's you a, a badge you had a cool little 
low rider s10 in high school yeah back in high school that's awesome yeah the black one pretty cool um, so good to see you badge for those that don't know What's up, badge? badge everybody needs one he was the uh go-to mechanic out in uh out in Ehrenberg, good old squatterville yep it's badge's birthday happy birthday yeah badge. it is isn't it? happy birthday badge that's so cool yeah it's a shame he's not gonna be down there in squatterville we'll have to make sure somebody's keeping an eye on it for him yeah stuck up in uh Stuck up in Canada for the time being. For the winter. Yeah, man. Dang uh, closed borders. Sue Kelly, did you fix the floor <clears throat> heater in the bus? No, haven't got to that yet, but I've honestly, I'm hooked up to power here, so I've only been using the heat function on my mini split, actually. I haven't kicked on the diesel heater just because I have electric, so I'm able just to <clears throat> use that. Um, so maybe that's something that we'll get to if we have enough time. If I stick around, I still don't know, like, getting the bus done here. And then after that, I don't know what the plan is. It could be building another mini school. It really depends on your timeline or what, what Wes is up what, to. Yeah, well, what's happening. Because not only with the bus stuff he has here, he also has uh, car stuff he can do. Yeah, so. I'm working on a 58 Chevy fleet side pickup truck at the moment doing some – just got the body sandblasted. I replaced the cab corners and just doing some sheet metal work and getting ready to start on body work here before too long. So we're going to build a little hot rod while I'm here. Uh Hopefully, or just get it as far along as I can, actually. Um, what's up, Dean? Nice to see you, man. I haven't seen Dean for a while. It's not your birthday, huh? <laughs> he said, not my birthday, but hi. <laughs> yeah. Dean's I, off the road now, right? I, I believe so. I don't. Dean, are you? Uh, what are you doing now, man? Uh, I don't believe you're, you're on the road at the moment. Yeah, if you have any questions for us, just put it in the... Uh, Put it in the comments. Oops, I scrolled down. And also, if you're watching this later, um, put them down in the comments of the video. We might do this Saturdays or something, maybe, possibly, for half an hour. We can do that, yeah. I mean, let's not commit 100%, but yeah, let's try to try to do some more updates while you're here, for sure. Mm -hmm. It'd be good. Lawrence Constantine. Wes, make sure he doesn't escape before painting the bus. I think people think I'm... Uh, thinking I'm avoiding painting the bus, but it's just more of like <laughs> rather be out working or doing other stuff than yeah, cool. sanding down a 40 foot school bus. Well, it's not fun work for sure. It's not and, fun uh, at all. And, and <laughs> life happens, you know, you got things, you got priorities, you know, and, and mm -hmm. paint is just cosmetic. It's not an actual priority in life. So it will look cool though. For those that don't know, it'll be a it black cool. on the sides where the gray is. Rub rails will be black <laughs> as well. And then white for the rest of it. So that'll be pretty cool. I'm excited to, to see it. Ashley, is your schoolie build manual still available? Yes, it is. And if you want a free copy, uh, what's the easiest way to get that to you? Um, if you want a free copy, just email me at chris at theoffgridschoolie.com and uh, I'll send you a uh, copy over if you want to, uh, want to read that. Uh, Polygon, what? Who has the best unlimited data plan at this point? I see some pushing Nomad Internet. What do, what do you use for internet? I just use my hotspot on my phone is all I'm doing. And what service do you have? Uh, Verizon. Verizon. I, I have Verizon too. Uh, in terms of internet, from what I hear, and it's what I do, is I actually go to eBay and get the grandfathered unlimited plans from 2004 to 2007. I think that's the best ones, where it's truly unlimited. It's about $100 to $150 a month, but with my pep wave, I just put it in the pep wave and it boosts the signal, and I have fast, unthrottled internet, and I go through 100 to 150 gigs per month, and it's good to go. So I would suggest that. So you can still get the grandfathered in? Mm -hmm. uh, you get you get them from uh, eBay. Service? No kidding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're expensive, but you know when you have unlimited internet on the road, especially when you do a bunch of videos, and yeah. you, you got to have it. So nice. And then I have backup on my phone that I can do as well. Yeah. Cause I only, with my hotspot, I only have 15 gigs at, you know, the regular speed. And then after 15 gigs, they throttle it down for me. And that happens so, quick. So, yeah, it does real quick. Especially if you're watching Netflix series, <laughs> the Witcher, if you guys need a good one. Yeah. I've been watching the Witcher. It's been pretty good. I'm waiting to wait for the end. Uh, so Dean looks like he said he's building the trailer. So cool. Oh, cool. What are you uh, going to pull that? Thing with Dean, 
you're gonna get a cool Toyota or something. Um, Chris, if you're heading to Nashville, check out Rockvale and Eagle Eagleville areas south of Nashville. Yeah, I was looking uh, a little bit closer to Nashville proper. Uh, the piece of land I was looking at is about 10 minutes from the airport and 15 minutes from downtown uh, just for the tourist side of things. But yeah, I've been, I've been looking all over that area and the Burke asked, Chris, how is your dog doing? He's doing well. I have him over in the bus because Wes has cats for, oh, it looks like he's out. He pushed the door open. Oh, he did. He got out. I was going to check on Kobuck real quick. Running around. But he has his best friend here, uh, a uh, cattle dog named Willis. Yep. They are BFF. So (laughs) we're out there playing with them. Uh, Gina's got a question for you on my side. He said, uh, or she says, I realize I'm on West's channel, but quick question for Chris. I can't find the podcast on Spotify. It might not be on Spotify. I need to get it on there. Um, Brad just mentioned it. I just assumed it'd go to all platforms. Okay. <clears throat> do you have problems? Uh, Sue asked, do you have problems with signal in a metal bus? I don't because the pep wave system, and this goes to Mark SD as well. Um, the pep wave actually brings the cell, cell signal in and then it repeats it out <laughs> as a Wi-Fi service. So I have Wi-Fi within the bus and I have no problems at all. And the pep wave really is that awesome. I highly suggest it. It's a little pricey, but it's awesome. Way better than uh, we boost. Way, way like night and day difference. I'm gonna go check on Kobe. Check Kobe's real quick. Okay. Dean says this isn't a Q and A for Dean. <laughs> what is this win? Yeah, Dean, you should uh, you should get on and do a Q&A as well. I'm sure there's many people out there that want to know what you've been up to for sure. I mean, I'd like to know. <laughs> I was hoping that building would have worked out, man. You could have come down and helped me, help me build some stuff. What's up, Goeys? What's up, bud? Man, that wind is crazy. You going to come in and hang out with us? Kobe's down. <clears throat> um, Let's see what we got over here. We'll be at Quartzite next year. Both of us, we have no idea. No idea. Not in the plans at the moment, but who knows? Bricks of happiness. What cameras are you using? I'm using the Sona, Sony A6500, the Alpha 6500, and you're using the Canon, right? Yeah, the Canon M50 still is what I'm using. Seems to get. The I job wonder done. if they meant what we're using to f- film here. I don't know. Oh, if uh, you're talking our, about the podcast, it's just our MacBook yeah, Pros, just, just our laptops. Bricks of happiness. Yes, this is live. Yeah, yeah, right now. So, yeah, we're using our laptops right now, actually. It is weird how the different... uh, Mine is very... But mine's a 2000. This is my 2012 MacBook Pro. Yeah. And what what year is that? 2015. Yeah. A little different images, for sure. I'll do it. Let's see. Scott Rogers asking about the building basically still still have it where's that it what do you say scott rogers oh I'm... he's just asking okay. about the building. yeah yeah i i do still have the building i uh it's up for sale though and we're just gonna kind of see how things go maybe in february if i still own it um i might just go ahead and do a little bit of work to it but for now i'm just kind of taking a break from it doing some other things um, yeah, Dean, it'd be cool to have your help. And, uh, I really miss going to Wasteland this year. Yeah, man. I, uh, I definitely want to make it to Wasteland weekend. Um, hopefully we can get Chris down there too. I'd love to do a Burning Man and Wasteland weekend in the same year. I think that'd be really cool. Just, you know, it's about a two week, uh, you know, apart, or two weeks apart from each other. So you get a Burning Man, enjoy that, and then travel down to the Mojave Desert and, uh, do wasteland that would be so cool so ashley asked two questions for wes <clears throat> thinking about using a larger wood burning stove like you have any cautionary advice and also any issues with your tree post in the long term so i'm assuming mm-hmm. it's yeah probably my bed on, post on back bed there post. so with the fireplace um the wood burning stove no no real issues at all you can kind of see it right back here 
but uh, it's a it works really great. It heats this bus up too hot sometimes, so in the middle of winter, I've got to open the windows up, which is actually kind of nice. Let some fresh air in. Um, but honestly, the best thing for me on this thing that I've learned is just don't feed it too much wood. Get a good fire going, get it warmed up quick, and then maybe one you know eight or ten inch log in there about every hour and a half or so, and it seems to maintain temperature really well. Um, as far as the, the bed post back there, no issues whatsoever with that. I've mounted it in there really solid and it's, it's stuck in place really good and, uh, holding up well. So. And, uh, first happiness asks any suggestions on started a simple podcast. Yeah. Um, I use SoundCloud to get on the RSS feed, which goes to all the typical players. Apparently Spotify has its own game right now, but, um, uh, yeah, you can just go on SoundCloud. I think it's like $120 a year, and then it will share on there. You just upload, add your tags and your image, and you're good to go. I mean, there's lots of YouTube videos to get you started on that. And Polygon asks, some regret building commercial vehicles and suggest that shuttle vans can be an easier conversion. What are your thoughts between a commercial bus versus shuttle van? I mean, from my experience, people that I know that did the shuttle bus, uh, well, you're dealing with, with a – bus you're dealing with straight metal like high grade high quality it's built to protect kids in a accident where the shuttle bus is fiberglass and the engine and drivetrain just because it's smaller doesn't doesn't necessarily mean it's cheaper because if you get that ford what is it the six two seven three no if you get seven three that's oh. good but the the one that has egr yeah, issues I think six two. like if you get the six two which a lot of those shuttle buses <clears> have <throat> Uh, it's a very expensive fix to get them bulletproofed where I'm very happy going with a bus. Like I know it's solid. I know it's good to go. The drivetrain's good. Um, and I don't know if I'd necessarily want to build something that had fiberglass shell on it. What, what, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, they, they work out okay, but it just depends on the usage and what you really plan on doing with it. Fiberglass poses a problem if you're trying to mount things to it and stuff like that. It's just not a structural. So, you know, if you're doing a simple build, not not too bad of a, a deal, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and Tanya Martin asked and asked you, "What's your fee to do a roof raise, and what does it include?" So, there's many variables that determine final costs on a roof raise. Of course, um, you know if you're doing an under the window raise, above the window raise, through the window raise, adding a door, um, putting in, you know, maybe a different entry door, transition styles. I mean, there's so much, but um, on average, I guess my cost or the cost would be about seven to $10,000, um, for the actual labor part of it. And materials are usually about a thousand to 1500 bucks. Just kind of depends on fluctuating metal prices, you know? Um, so that's pretty much, you know, on average, a, a roof raise, you know, is about 8,500 bucks usually, um, final said and done price, you know, for people. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's definitely a bit of an investment, but if you're doing this full time and like, if you're like us or it's like a foreseeable future setup where you're wanting to do this for a while, I am very, very glad that I did a roof raise because I was considering back and forth because on the way home, I did a dumb thing and bought the bus in Florida while I was in Alaska, sight unseen, and it just had a bunch of issues getting it back to, you know, either do the roof raise or Arizona, and I was debating on not even doing a roof raise on my bus. And then I met Wes for the first time in person because on the way back, <clears throat> Texas was like a middle ground. I could either go from Texas to Arizona or Texas to Colorado to do the roof raise. And I saw his bus and saw like, okay, I plan on doing this for a while. It's definitely worth it. So it is an investment for sure. But if you're doing it for a while, I highly suggest it if you're wanting to do a bus. Yeah, it, it makes it feel so much more roomy in here. And plus with, you know, the added added space, you can go ahead and add in the upper upper cabinetry and stuff, which, you know, on the regular roof raises or roof buses, you can't really do that. There's not enough space above the windows to do any of that sort of stuff. So you get tons more storage, you know, up there for sure. <clears throat> um, let's see what I've got over here. Gina says I should build a Dutch door. That could be kind of cool. I know uh, a gal, uh, she's got a little Dutch door on her bus. It's kind of neat. Well, that's cool. I haven't seen her on a bus. I've seen her on a tiny home. It works out really well. Yeah. <clears throat> Once a lot of fresh air in, you don't have to worry about your door being open. Right. 
Yeah, you want to do a couple more questions and go get those breakfast burritos? Yeah, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> We're gonna get some breakfast burritos and pick up a filter. So I also have the uh, um, the video will be uploading tomorrow on my channel. Picked up the Zeppelin three, the little mini bus. Finished some work on that, and the diesel heater in there wasn't working. It ended up just being a filter. Um, one of the fuel filters wasn't letting any fuel through, and got that figured out. And yeah, our terrible, terrible, terrible. Chinese directions didn't explain anything about the the operation of the unit, but we figured that one out too. Well, they, so. they tried to explain, but <laughs> I don't comprehend what the heck they were telling us. It was terrible. <laughs> no real good uh, explanation at all. Chris just started pushing buttons and figured it out. So, mm -hmm. um, so hey, Wes, we are getting ready to do a roof raise on a 96 Thomas. Just curious about your plate and thread rod size you recommend. Um, yeah, that's from a Luna Sharp. Um, so I, I like to use seven eighths all thread and, you know, get the bigger nuts that thread onto that, of course. And usually, yeah, the burritos are going to be great. Dean, there's an awesome <laughs> taco truck or Mexican food truck, or actually it's food trailer up here that just have great bacon, egg, cheese, and potato burritos are amazing. I was missing it since last year for sure. Yeah. So let me get back to that question. The burrito threw me off here. <laughs> 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 um yeah but i, I like seven eights all thread and uh when you when you get your uh tubing that goes you know that the all thread inserts into make sure it's kind of snug in there and not loose it'll help keep that roof from swaying around a little bit um and then you know quarter inch three eighths steel plate works good um you know to actually create that stuff and then i just use a, a, a mig welder I, i've got a 110 mig welder that i use um I, I was using gas for quite some time but working out here in the field the argon washes away from your weld and your weld likes to blister up a bit so i've just started using the flux core wire and i've gotten really used to it it's kind of a mess it splatters all over the place but it it puts some pretty good welds and works just fine so um let's see what else we got real quick um Pauline asks, how long would it take to do a roof raise? So on, on a roof raise, um, usually, you know, it depends on all what all I'm doing, but usually about two to four weeks on, on average. Depends on how many people you have there, because we did the one in California in five days. Yeah, so so Three normally, yeah, we have Chris and uh, another friend of ours, Dustin, um, he, he helped us do one in, in California, and we got that thing done in five days, so... You know, that's with three guys that know what we're doing pretty, pretty well and uh, knocking it out. But yeah, on average, two to four weeks, usually depending on what all is getting done. Um, if it's a pretty simple raise. I can get it done in about two weeks or so. <clears throat> but if I'm adding, adding more things, it's about I just put four some weeks in your, in your deal. Thank you. Oh, goodness gracious. I don't know if you like it or not. Of course we're going to like it. I just kind of fudgy with that. So, so we have a great host here, <laughs> Deanna, and she, she just brought us some food. We're, we're doing a YouTube live at the moment. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Good grief. That's still warm and everything. Bro. Have to eat some of these. Yeah. So you got some Kobe's here. Or not. Some Kobe here. Let's eat it now. Let's just make them envious of us. I'm not even sure what it is. Crab dip. Tanya Martin, I've been following you guys for about one and a half years. Oh, and you two have some of the best schoolies. Wes, mm. what is your contact information? Um, well, I thank you, too. Yep. yep. The thank, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Put a lot of our heart and soul into these things. and It's, it it's a lot good. of work. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so it feels, it feels good to be noticed and recognized you know, for what we do. We, we do try to do a good job on everything we do um contact information you can just email me um at mudda earth at uh gmail.com m-u-d-d-a-e-a-r-t-h at gmail cool it's about half an hour now thanks for watching we'll see if we can line one of these up for next saturday possibly <clears throat> and uh thanks everybody for for watching yep thanks and, so much guys and if you want a schoolie manual my email <laughs> is chris at the offgrid schoolie.com i'll send one of those over the, to you for free it's how i built my bus how i make money online basically what i've learned on the road in the last 10 years or so so thanks for watching see you guys all right we'll see you guys <laughs>